The Israeli army says it has opened a humanitarian corridor to allow civilians in northern Gaza. This as the war is about to complete a month tomorrow. A video message asking Gazans to leave the northern part of the Palestinian territory that was described as a war zone. The army has alleged that the Hamas militants are using civilians as human shields, which is why the residents must evacuate immediately. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that the U.S. officials are working to secure a humanitarian pause in Gaza. Blinken hoped that this will prioritize objectives like getting in more aid into Palestinians and getting hostages held by Hamas police. After a visit to the West Bank, Blinken landed in Baghdad on his first visit to Iraq. Blinken held talks with Iraqi Prime Minister. Washington has stepped up diplomacy with countries in the region whose population have been angered by Israel's assault on Gaza to root out Hamas. A Hezbollah official has claimed that an Israeli strike on a car in South Lebanon killed three children, calling the attack a dangerous development. This raises the likelihood of a dangerous new escalation in the war on the Lebanon-Israel border. The Israeli troops and Lebanon's Hezbollah fighters and their allies have been clashing for a month along the border since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. However, the IDF said that the military operates based on intelligence information and examines every event in Lebanon thoroughly. Gaza continues to reel under a dire humanitarian crisis even as the world leaders are calling for a humanitarian passage to allow supplies into the war torn region. The Jordanian Air Force has confirmed that it has conducted an airdrop of urgent medical aid in the early hours of Monday. Russia too has flown in 60 tons of humanitarian relief on two Illusion 76 strategic airlifters. According to the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations, the aid package contains food, hygiene, goods and mattresses that are being transferred to the Egyptian Red Cross Society for distribution in Gaza. A French military airplane carrying 18 tons of aid, humanitarian aid for Gaza, arrived in Egypt on Saturday. Evacuations of injured Gazans and foreign passport holders through the Rafah crossing to Egypt have been suspended. This comes after an Israeli strike hit an ambulance in Gaza that was being used to transport injured people to Egypt on Friday. However, the US and Qatari officials have said that efforts are underway to resume evacuations for injured Gazans and foreign nationals through the Rafah crossing. German and Egyptian nationals call on the respective governments to help them leave with their families. The Rafah crossing to Egypt's Sinai Peninsula is the only exit point from Gaza which is not controlled by Israel. Evacuations began on Wednesday under an internationally brokered deal uh, which is aimed at letting some foreign passport holders and some wounded Gazans out of the enclave. The Israeli military now claims that it has exposed a network of Hamas tunnels, command centers and rocket launchers beneath and adjacent to hospitals in northern Gaza. The militant group, however, denies doing so and has accused Israel of spreading lies. During a media briefing, Israel's chief military spokesperson presented videos, pictures and audio recordings. The army spokesperson highlighted Hamas's strategy of using hospitals as cover and preventing civilians from leaving combat zones. He also said that over 800 rockets fired from Gaza at Israel during the war fell short and landed inside the enclave there. Turkish police used tear gas and water cannon as hundreds of people at a pro-Palestinian rally that tried to storm an airbase that houses the U.S. troops. 
This came hours before U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was due in Ankara for talks on Gaza since the Israel Hamas war started. Demonstrations have erupted across the country. Turkey has stepped up its criticism of Israel as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza worsens. Footage from the protest, it shows police firing tear gas and using water cannons to disperse crowds waving Turkish and Palestinian flags and chanting slogans. Demonstrators toppled barricades and clashed with the police in riot gear. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Turkey this morning in his last stop in West Asia. The top U.S. diplomat is scheduled to meet senior government officials and discuss the raging Israel-Hamas conflict in Gaza. Notably, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been immensely critical of Israel's offensive in Gaza, calling the actions crime against humanity. Turkey has also recalled its ambassador to Israel for consultation. It's being perceived that the war threatens to have broad repercussions on Washington's relations with Turkey. The U.S. has also been tightening sanctions against Turkish individuals and companies that are deemed to be helping Russia evade sanctions and import goods for use in its war with Ukraine. Thousands of Iraqis took to the streets to protest against the visit of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. The top U.S. diplomat made a surprise visit to Iraq amid tensions that the ongoing Israel-Hamas war could become a broader regional conflict. Blinken met with Iraqi Prime Minister uh, in Baghdad for more than an hour. He also visited the U.S. Embassy where he received a security briefing on the threat to the U.S. facility situated there. Just last month, the U.S. intercepted three drones in Iraq targeting the U.S. forces. Blinken told reporters his meeting with the Prime Minister was good and productive and said that he made clear that the attacks by Iranian-backed militias against U.S. personnel are unacceptable. Former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison arrived in Israel on Sunday and toured southern Israeli border towns, which have been devastated by the October 7th Hamas attack. They were accompanied by Israeli soldiers and officials. Johnson and Morris walked into some of the houses which were burned during the attacks. Morrison and Johnson, and uh, rather they, they, both of them, they met with the Israeli President Isaac Herzog. Morrison said in a statement that he was thankful to be joined by Johnson in the showing of support with Israel and the Jewish community around the world. The permanent representatives of Israel to the UN, Danny Donnon, thanked uh, the two former prime ministers for their support and described them as true friends of the country. The Russian Defense Ministry has released a video which shows a nuclear-capable ballistic missile test launched from the country's newest submarine. The missile, which the Federation of American Scientists say is designed to carry up to six nuclear warheads, it was launched from an underwater position in the White Sea. This comes shortly after Russian President Vladimir Putin rescinded ratification of the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which outlaws nuclear explosions, including live tests of nuclear weapons. This was the final test run for the, for the Imperator, Alexander III submarine. The submarine is armed with 16 Bulava missiles with a range of about 8,000 kilometers. According to Russian news media, Moscow aims to build around 12 Bori-class submarines that will be divided between northern and Pacific fleets. Russia carried out strikes on Odessa city center late on Sunday that left the city's main art galleries damaged and injured five other people. The late night airstrike damaged the Odessa National Art Museum on the eve of its 124th anniversary. The governor of Odessa telegrammed that 
The government of Odessa wrote on Telegram that Russia had chosen to, to congratulate the monument with a missile strike. The strike comes in the wake of a successful submarine launch of the Bulava ICBM system earlier in the day. Police arrested a man and rescued a child at the center of a hostage standoff at Germany's Hamburg airport on Sunday, ending a crisis that had forced authorities to close the busy air hub. A man who police said was suspected of carrying a gun and possibly explosives drove a vehicle through the gates of the airport on Saturday night. Police said that the 35-year-old man was with his 4-year-old daughter and was thought to be involved in a custody dispute. The airport said it was working to resume operations as quickly as possible. The episode raised concerns over security at the airport less than four months after the climate activists got onto the runway and blocked planes. Caravan carrying hundreds of migrants left from the southern Mexican city of Tapachula on Sunday heading for the U.S. southern border. The smaller caravan pl plans to join a larger one that left six days ago and is currently stopped 40 kilometers north of the town of Huxtla. Well, some previous caravans have clashed with the Mexican police which tried to stop them from walking along major highways. Many migrants are, are also fleeing poverty and political instability in their homelands, hailing from Cuba, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti and especially Honduras and Venezuela. The number of people apprehended at the U.S.'s southern border exceeded to 2 million both in the 2022 and 2023 fiscal years. While well, Biden has come under attack for his handling of migration crisis in particular on the U.S.-Mexico border. Five people, including two children, have been killed and several others were left injured at a popular tourist town in rural Australia after a car crashed into a crowd of patrons on the front lawn of the pub. The incident occurred when, uh, when an SUV mounted a curb and hit patrons outside a pub in Dallas Fold, which is about 110 kilometers of Melbourne. Four people died at the scene while a girl died in hospital after being airlifted to Melbourne for treatment. Police did not specify if the victims were related and whether speed was a factor at that stage, but they've said that those killed were not local residents. All the victims are yet to be formally identified. According to the authorities, the exact cause of the incident is yet to be identified. As Nepal reels under the disaster of a 6.4 magnitude earthquake struck which struck the country's west, India has lent a helping hand. Indian Foreign Minister announced that India had sent emergency relief assistance to Nepal. An Indian Air Force plane carrying medicines and other relief material, including tents and blankets, has reached Nepal. Further cons consignments of relief material are expected to arrive in Nepal in the coming days. India had also provided $1 billion to Nepal as a part of its long-term assistance for post-earthquake reconstruction in the housing, education, health and cultural sectors. India's national capital, New Delhi, once again is, once again is experiencing dense smog and poor air quality. Today, the overall AQI of Delhi was recorded at 471, while the AQI of satellite city Noida was recorded at 616, which is in severe category. AQI reached 516 in Gurugram, which is adjacent to Delhi. And according to the experts, an AQI value of 300 represents hazardous air quality. New Delhi stands at 470, and the health professionals have expressed concerns that the air pollution is increasing asthma and lung problems in children and the elderly. And this is due to concentration of PM 2.5.
The measure to understand the pollution level is called particulate matter 2.5. They are tiny airborne particles invisible to the naked eye and small enough to pass through the lungs and into the bloodstream. These can also lead to a range of health problems. Thirty Pikachu mascots from Japan's popular Pokemon franchise dance in front of hundreds of fans outside a shopping mall in downtown Bangkok. Kicking off the festive season in the Thai capital, the event was organized by the Central Group, a major Thai retail conglomerate, and took place at the Central World Shopping Center. The Pikachu-themed campaign is set to run until the beginning of January. Japan services activity expanded at the slowest pace this year in October, reinforcing concerns that the key sector propelling economic growth is continuing to soften. Although consumption maintained its post-pandemic momentum, the rise in new orders was the weakest since January, and new export orders slipped into the contraction for the first time in 14 months. Experts also warned that the worsening conflict in the Middle East and slower growth in China that could cloud the outlook for Japan. The Indian rupee started trading higher today. That's mostly due to the U.S. non-farm payroll data, which indicates a weakening economy in the U.S. This has raised expectations of the Federal Reserve ending its rate hikes, resulting in a boost for the Indian rupee. The dollar index, which measures the U.S. currency's strength against major currencies, was still trading higher than the historical averages. Indonesia's annual economic growth slowed more than expected in the third quarter. That slowed down in the Asian nation's worst in two years. Exports shrank in the July to September quarter and household consumption weakened, landing a double blow to the economy. The resource-rich country had recorded its highest growth in nine years in 2022 and that was due to a boom in commodity prices which have cooled off since then.